Before we talk more about the differences between polar protic and polar aprotic solvents, let's talk about what a hydrogen bond means, because this is also an important concept to understand the differences between these two solvents. So a hydrogen bond is essentially a non-covalent bond, and in this bond we have an electrostatic attraction that takes place between a hydrogen bond donor and a hydrogen bond acceptor. Now our hydrogen bond donor is going to be a hydrogen atom which is partially positive, while our hydrogen bond acceptor atom is going to be a lot more electronegative. And these acceptors can either be oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine. And another rule to take into account for hydrogen bonding is that the hydrogen bond donor, or H atom, it has to be part of an OH, NH, or FH group. However, keep in mind that the OH and NH groups, they tend to be more common in hydrogen bonds than FH. And also, hydrogen bonds can either be intramolecular, meaning that they take place or exist between two or more molecules, or they can be intramolecular, which means that they take place within a single molecule, the same molecule. However, in this video, we're only going to be talking about intermolecular hydrogen bonds, because that's what matters in this case. So here are the key differences between polar protic and polar aprotic solvents. In a polar protic solvent, both hydrogen bond donors and acceptors are present, which implies that OH, NH, and FH bonds can all exist. However, once again, since OH and NH groups are more common in hydrogen bond formation, we tend to see OH and NH bonds more in polar protic solvents compared to the presence of FH bonds. So here are some main examples of polar protic solvents. We have water, alcohols, and carboxylic acids. The A represents the acceptor atom, while the D represents the donor atom. And here we have polar aprotic solvents. In polar aprotic solvents, only hydrogen bond acceptors are present. There can be no hydrogen bond donors, which implies that there cannot be OH, NH, or FH bonds present, because the H atom in OH, NH, and FH is a hydrogen bond donor. However, once again, we cannot have hydrogen bond donors, we can only have hydrogen bond acceptors. We can still have the O, N, and F atoms present, they just have to have covalent bonds with atoms that are not hydrogen. So for example, let's look at DMSO. In this sulfonyl group over here, the oxygen atom is covalently bonded to sulfur, and oxygen is still a hydrogen bond acceptor. And here in DMF, the N and the O atoms are still acceptors, and in THF, our oxygen atom is also a hydrogen bond acceptor. So now let's talk a little bit more about hydrogen bonding. When you place a nucleophile in a polar protic solvent, there are hydrogen bonds that form between the nucleophile and the solvent molecules, and there's also hydrogen bonding that takes place between the different solvent molecules as well. However, when you place a nucleophile in a polar aprotic solvent, there is no significant hydrogen bonding that takes place. So let's consider this nucleophile over here, and first let's place it in a polar protic solvent such as H2O. So here we have a hydrogen bond that forms between the nucleophile and a solvent molecule. Hydrogen bond acceptor, hydrogen bond donor. And here's another hydrogen bond that forms between our nucleophile and another water solvent molecule. But in addition to this, you can see that we have hydrogen bonds that also form between the different water solvent molecules. Hydrogen bond acceptor, hydrogen bond donor. And these are not all of the hydrogen bonds that form. If I were to draw all of them, then our diagram would be extremely cluttered, so I only included a few of them for simplicity. All of this hydrogen bonding creates a solvation shell that surrounds the nucleophile. And this solvation shell makes it a lot more difficult for the nucleophile to donate a pair of electrons to the electrophile because we have all of these solvent molecules in the way. So therefore, our solvation shell makes our nucleophile weaker. Let's compare this to the polar aprotic solvent case. In this case, we're going to place our nucleophile, the same one as in this example, we're going to place it in DMF. So here, there is no significant hydrogen bonding because we only have hydrogen bond acceptors present. We do not have any hydrogen bond donors. And this H atom is definitely not a hydrogen bond donor because it's part of a CH group. It's not part of an OH, NH, or FH group. It's part of a CH group. So since there is no significant hydrogen bonding, in this case over here, there is no significant solvation shell that forms. And as a result, there are fewer solvent molecules in the way, which means that our nucleophile can exist more freely in the solution. If the nucleophile can exist more freely in the solution, then it's easier for this nucleophile to donate a pair of electrons to the electrophile. So as a result, the nucleophile here is stronger compared to this case over here, because here we have a solvation shell that's problematic. 
for the nuclear file to do its job.